friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to yet another interesting video wherein I'm going to talk about how you can clear the TGT PGT exam in just the first attempt. Sounds amazing, right? So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you should start. What are the things that you should keep in mind when you're beginning your preparation for TGT PGT exam? And finally, towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you some really amazing and really important bonus tips on mistakes that you should avoid making while you are preparing for the examination. So make sure you watch the video till the end. If you are new to this channel, then please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon as well so that you never miss an update. We are proud to share that we are India's largest growing YouTube channel in the field of UGC net and TGT PGT examination right now having the maximum number of subscribers. So let us begin by talking about point number one, which is very crucial and it is to not take the exam lightly. The TGT PGT exam, as I have discussed in my multiple videos, has two basic sections, grammar and literature. Both of them have equal weightage. Now, one problem that I've seen with many students is that they leave out the section which they think they are weak in. Some who are weak in grammar, they leave it out and solely focus on literature, while the reverse is true for those who are weak in literature. However, at this point, I would like to tell you one thing. Please don't leave any topic. You need to understand that when you score well in both the sections in this exam, then only you will be able to clear it. You cannot rely on 50% of the syllabus and hope to clear the exam because the cutoff itself usually goes very high. Don't fall in the myth that since this exam has limited syllabus and no negative marking, hence it is a very very easy exam to clear. If you are feeling this way, then there are many other aspirants who are feeling the same way. And this is where the competition gets really tough because an exam that seems easy for all in the end becomes the most difficult one to clear. That is because generally in such exams, the cutoff goes very high and only those who had worked hard even for an easy exam would be able to clear it. Many times students tell me that some topics only come for 10 marks in the paper. So is there any need to study them in so much detail because they're just carrying 10 marks? I would like to ask you a simple question. Can you afford to lose even a single mark in TGT PGT exam? No, right? This is the reason why I'm saying that every single mark matters. So your target should be to attempt all the questions with the best of your ability. It is only when you attempt 100% of the questions, you will have a scope of plus minus 10%, which can be due to silly mistakes. But still, by large, you'll be able to secure 90% marks and you will be at a comfortable clearing position. It is just like that famous proverb, shoot for the moons, at least, even if you miss, you land amongst the star. Hence, in this exam situation, aim for 100 marks despite the difficulty level and you will be able to secure 90 marks on the final day. Now we move on to point number two, which is very crucial. It is a differentiating factor between those who clear this exam and those who fail to do it. The point number two is to make smart study strategy. Telling you in all sincerity, only hard work doesn't guarantee success. You need to adapt smart work. Smart work is what separates you from others. So let me explain hard work to you. Hard work is when you have a TGT PGT guidebook of about 400 pages and you mark it up cover to cover. This is hard work. But is it possible? Will you have so much time to mark up the entire book? Will you be able to revise and remember the entire book? A definite no is the answer as we all know. So here what you need is a smart strategy with guides on what to read and in how much detail. You cannot solely rely on topics that they have mentioned in the syllabus because they haven't specified all the topics in the syllabus. They have not mentioned which works of the author are to be studied and in what depth. For example, Wordsworth has penned down around 100-150 poems, but only 7 or 8 of them are asked in much detail when it comes to TGT-PGT exam. Whereas 15 to 20 poems can be dealt with by only studying the title and certain keywords and important facts. So it will be a waste of time for anybody who attempts to study the remaining 130 poems. First case first, it is an impossible task and even if someone is able to study 130 poems, would he or she will be able to retain and recall such amount of information. And let me tell you, it is not just one writer 
we are talking about there are around 25 to 30 writers who are asked in tgt pgt exams so always ensure that you adapt a smart study approach the first step of a smart study approach is to thoroughly go through the syllabus the next step that you have to take is to look at the previous year questions. You can find all the previous year TGT PGT papers on our website arpatakarva.com available free of cost along with the answer keys. So as I was discussing, the second step is to analyze the past year papers and sort every question according to topic or the writer. And only after that you will be finally have a list which will be useful in analyzing the various questions that have been asked related to a particular writer or a particular work in last 10 years. Now once you have made that list, you can decide to give what amount of importance to which topic, writer or work and also take a call to skip certain topics from which questions haven't been asked. Now this entire thing is a 30-40 hour long process because analyzing the past year papers then segregating them according to different parameters isn't an easy task. However, we have simplified this task for you with our online mock test series in which we provide you topic wise segregated previous year questions and other practice questions so that once you have studied the topic you can directly jump to the questions and see how much you have prepared and where do you stand in terms of the topic. We have just released separate video course also for TGT PGT exam. We're proud to announce that we are the only institute in India that teaches through animated video lectures. Our videos are designed using 3D animation and graphic which enhance the visual memory of the students so that they are able to retain the complicated summaries of novels, plays and poems easily and recall it effectively during the exam. In our online course, we provide you with topic-wise video lessons with rich animations covering all topics in a step-by-step -step manner, which works even when you've not done any previous preparation. We also provide you high-quality PDF and revision notes that cover syllabus-wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. Also, another very important reason to analyze the previous year papers of TGT is that many times questions are repeated in the following years with just a bit of modification in the language. But by and large, the questions remains the same. So analyzing past year papers will directly hand you the advantage of knowing those 5 to 10 questions. So let me now summarize the smart study strategy in three simple steps. The first step is to know the syllabus. The second step is to analyze the past year papers and sort the topics from which questions are being asked. And the third is to finally study those topics from either a guidebook or some YouTube videos or using any online platform like Google. Now we come on to the third important point, which is revision. So I will tell you my students, don't wait for course completion, jump directly to revision. What does this mean? Let me explain. There are a variety of people attempting the TGT PGT exam, be it college students, working professionals or housewives. All these people are tied up and have a pretty strict schedule. They do complain that they hardly get time to complete the syllabus. And here I am stressing on revision. I would even go ahead and emphasize that revision is more important than completing the actual syllabus. You might find my words a little absurd, but this is the fact that revision is actually very, very, very important. Let me give you a real life example which tells the importance of revision. One of my cousins recently gave SAT exam and in the exam he made two silly mistakes which were related to the simple formula of mean and median. Though he had studied so much for this exam, yet he forgot this basic formula only because he forgot to revise the formula at the last moment. This lack of revision costed him 4 marks because of which he could not clear the exam. Many times while attempting the exam, you will see many questions familiar to you. You will be like, Are ye to padha tha. But still, you won't be able to solve it since you did not revise it properly. Similarly, some questions might have such close options that you'll get confused. And the basic reason behind such situation is lack of revision. That's why I'm emphasizing and requesting you all to not wait for course completion and rather focus on revision on a regular basis. A simple method to ensure that you revise every day is divide your study slot A of 4 hours in 2 sections. 3 hours you should devote to studying the material and one hour you should solely devote every day to revise what you studied yesterday. 
always do remember that every day you are reading and absorbing information regarding different writers and works however this information will not consolidate unless and until you have done multiple revisions another point to add here is that most of the students move away from revision or they shy away from revision because they feel uncomfortable when they are revising they have this feeling that they know nothing as they'll not be able to remember anything when they revise for the first time so you'll not remember anything on the first revision cycle but always remember that success happens outside the comfort zone you're feeling uncomfortable right now as you've just started the process however once you revise your notes for the first time you will be far more comfortable in the next revision cycle I'm sure many of the gym freaks out there would agree with my point. The first day at the gym seems the hardest and the most uncomfortable one. But after 20 25 days you feel more and more comfortable as your body starts supporting you in the routine. Similarly, the first revision will feel mentally exhausting, but you do not run away for it. With subsequent revision, you will get comfortable and you will eventually start enjoying the process. Also keep in mind that too much new information before the exam won't help you clear the exam as you won't be able to retain and recall it if you really want to test this study one topic today and give a test on it tomorrow you will hardly be able to recall anything without revision tomorrow similarly the topic you have read way before and haven't revised won't help you unless you revise that is the reason why i am advising you to not pick up any new topic last ke 10 15 days mein whatever you've read do multiple revisions of it so that you can at least earn the reward for the topics that you've studied hard i always tell this analogy to my students regarding revision imagine a bucket with a hole in it what will happen if you keep pouring water into it it will never get filled right similarly without revision your brain is like that bucket having a hole or an outlet from which the information is constantly leaking hence you need to do revision so that you can close the hole and you can retain the information now that we are almost towards the end of the video i want to give you all some bonus tips on what mistakes you should avoid doing but before we move ahead a small reminder if you have any other questions or doubts about ugc net paper 1 paper 2 ma entrance phd entrance tgt pgt or any other competitive exam related to english literature then feel free to reach out to us on whatsapp the whatsapp number is flashed right on the screen you can shoot a whatsapp message on the same number to regularly get important updates related to latest exam notification syllabus change and much more and if you are searching for free study material on various topics related to ugc net or tgt pgt then feel free to ping us on whatsapp and my team will be more than happy to assist you so let's now quickly move on to the bonus tips the first bonus tip is to avoid skipping any topic of the syllabus many times you are too afraid to study a topic and you comfortably skip it from your preparation काफी स्टूडेंट्स को डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन से डर लगता है मैथ से डर लगता है तो वो एग्जाम से पहले ये पोर्शन छोड़ के ही चले जाते हैं रादर यू शुड गिव टाइम एंड इन्वेस्ट सम एफर्ट टूवर्ड्स सच अ टॉपिक एंड ट्रस्ट मी देर इज नो टॉपिक विच यू कांट अंडरस्टैंड आई ऑलवेज टेल माई स्टूडेंट्स फेस द फियर एंड फियर विल गो द सेकेंड बोनस टिप इज रिलेटेड टू अनदर टाइप ऑफ मिस्टेक दैट स्टूडेंट्स मेक विच इज टू गो ओवर बोर्ड एंड बिकम ओवर एम्बिशियस they start studying every topic in a way more detailed way than it is required for example if they pick up shakespeare and his works they will do nothing but study shakespeare for next 15 days aisa lagta hai jaise shakespeare mein phd kar rahe hain this approach also hampers your preparation as you are forced to skip many other important topics due to lack of time and eventually the syllabus is never complete to tackle this situation you need to make a reverse engineering time table count back the number of days left from the exam date to present calculate the number of hours you devote every day and then accordingly allocate time to each topic in your syllabus your aim should be to cover all the topics in limited time the third bonus tip revolves around the third mistake that usually students make which is not analyzing their mock test for example if an aspirant give tgd pgt mock test and scores around 50 out of 100 in the mock test they usually don't pay any heed to why they lost 50 marks 
However, if you are able to decode the lost marks and the reasons, be it silly mistakes or topics on which you have a weak command on, then only you will be able to score better in the next mock. Mock after mock isn't what you should follow. You will only progress when you give a mock, analyze your mistakes or shortcomings, work upon them and then move to another mock. One more point I want to mention here is that many students do not recognize the kind of mistakes they are repeating on a regular basis. They don't keep track of the repetitive mistakes. Just like Ishan and Tare Zameeper, we are also having the same pattern of committing the same error. Now it's time that you become Amir Khan, recognize the pattern of your mistake and work on it. So these were some tips and tricks from my side. I'm quite eager to know how you felt about this video. Did you like it, not like it, did you find it helpful? Please share your views in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, any queries or if you want me to make a video on any other topic, then also feel free to put that in the comment section below. That's it from my side from this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarwa.com.